We all know about China's orbital outpost, the Tiangong Space Station, but far fewer people realize the nation is preparing something far larger. Back in 2022, China revealed that Tiangong would serve as a key testing hub for its ambitious space-based solar power program. The plan was to use the station as a platform to validate high-voltage power systems with its robotic arms practicing how future solar power modules could be assembled in orbit. Yang Hong, Tiangong's chief designer, outlined this vision during the China Space Conference. Once testing is complete, the system will travel to its own orbit, deploy massive solar arrays, and begin evaluating how effectively it can capture, convert, and transmit energy. The goal is to advance essential technologies, gather real orbital data, and support China's long-term push toward carbon peaking and carbon neutrality. At the time, few realized this was only the starting point. Fast forward to October 2024, and headlines suddenly exploded with China's aggressive plans to construct fully operational space-based solar power stations. The project is quickly becoming far more ambitious than anyone imagined. So, what exactly is space-based solar power? Picture a giant kilometer-wide solar array orbiting Earth continuously absorbing sunlight and beaming energy to the surface day and night, without clouds, storms, or darkness interrupting. Unlike ground-based solar farms that struggle with weather, dust, and nighttime, a space system receives non-stop, unobstructed solar radiation. It captures this pure energy far more efficiently, then converts it into microwaves and sends it to receiving stations on Earth, where the power is transformed back into usable electricity and fed directly into the grid. Put simply, space-based solar power, or a space solar power station, is the concept of using satellites to collect solar energy in orbit and wirelessly transmit it to Earth. Because these satellites sit above the atmosphere, they can harvest nearly continuous sunlight, making them vastly more efficient than any ground-based system. Most SBSP designs divide the architecture into two main segments, the space component and the ground component. The space segment consists of enormous solar collecting satellites positioned in geostationary or other high orbits, allowing them to remain fixed above a single region. These satellites gather energy, convert it into microwave or laser beams, and transmit it downward. This wireless method eliminates the need for long-distance power lines either in orbit or on land. The ground segment focuses on receiving and converting the transmitted energy. It uses large antenna arrays that intercept the incoming microwaves and convert them into electricity that can be fed into national grids. Alongside these arrays are the control and management systems that ensure safe, stable satellite operations and consistent power distribution. If SBSP becomes reality, it could deliver a continuous, renewable, and highly scalable energy source, one that dramatically reduces dependence on fossil fuels and reshapes global clean energy strategies. Chinese space industry veteran Long Lehao didn't hold back when describing the potential of space-based solar power. We're working on this right now, he said calling it as significant as lifting the entire Three Gorges Dam and placing it in geostationary orbit, 36,000 kilometers above Earth. It's an extraordinary vision. He expanded on the idea even further. Imagine installing a full kilometer-wide solar array along the geostationary belt at 36,000 kilometers. The amount of energy that single structure could capture in one year would equal all recoverable oil reserves on Earth. In recent presentations, Long Lehao has consistently connected the SBSP project with China's next-generation heavy-lift rockets, the Long March 5, the evolving Long March series, and especially the massive Long March 9. These launch vehicles, he emphasized, will be essential for lifting gigantic solar power components into orbit. If completed, these orbital power stations could completely transform global energy generation. Long has repeatedly compared each one to putting the Three Gorges Dam into space. A bold analogy, considering the dam already produces about 100 billion kilowatt hours of electricity annually. It's one of Earth's largest energy megaprojects, 
and replicating that output in orbit demonstrates how revolutionary space-based solar power could become. Because of geographic constraints, China and the rest of the world has essentially hit the limits of what can be built on Earth. Massive hydroelectric projects are politically and physically limited. We can't simply cover entire regions with solar panels or fill critical shipping lanes with huge wind farms to satisfy rising energy demands. Nuclear fission and fusion offer possibilities, but both require major safety buffers and reliable cooling water, pushing plants far from major population centers. These constraints make scaling terrestrial energy infrastructure far more difficult than it appears, that's where space-based solar power stands out. Since orbital arrays collect energy much more efficiently, the ground facilities needed to receive that power can be smaller than the land-hungry solar and wind installations on Earth. And space offers something no region on Earth ever will. Limitless expansion room. As long as we can launch hardware into orbit, we can keep adding power stations positioned over different regions each delivering continuous, clean, high-output electricity. Beyond Earth, SBSP could also become a cornerstone for future space exploration. It could power long-term lunar bases, especially outposts focused on resource extraction, and support missions deeper into the solar system where sunlight is too weak for conventional solar panels. The China Academy of Space Technology, CAST, the state-owned spacecraft developer behind Tiangong's modules, has already outlined a detailed roadmap for its space-based solar power ambitions. CAST plans to conduct a high-voltage power transfer and wireless energy transmission experiment in low Earth orbit in 2028. Then, just two years later, in 2030, China aims to deploy a 1-megawatt station in geostationary orbit at 36,000 kilometers, assembling it in space before beaming power back to Earth. By 2035, the system is expected to scale to 10 megawatts, proving it can deliver meaningful energy output. And by 2050, the goal is a fully operational commercial power plant in space, generating 2 gigawatts using a kilometer-wide antenna and a massive solar array assembled entirely in orbit. Details about how these stations will actually be launched and constructed are still sparse, but based on China's current and upcoming rockets, we can make informed predictions. For the 2028 LEO demonstration, the most likely launch vehicle is the Long March 5B, reliable, capable of lifting 25,000 kilograms, and equipped with a large payload fairing suitable for bulky power transmission hardware. Looking ahead to the 2030 geostationary mission, the demonstration could ride aboard the upcoming Long March 10. While its exact performance figures haven't been fully disclosed, it's expected to deliver around 30,000 to 40,000 kilograms to geostationary transfer orbit, especially if paired with the large diameter fairings China is developing for Lunar Space Station assembly. For the long-term rollout of full-scale solar power stations, Long Lei Hao has emphasized the critical role of the Long March 9. This next-generation super-heavy rocket, still in development, is designed to lift 150,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit or 54,000 kilograms to a lunar transfer orbit, exactly the kind of capability required for kilometer-scale solar arrays and enormous antennas. Despite its colossal size, 114 meters tall and 10.6 meters wide, the Long March 9 is projected to be economically competitive thanks to a reusable first stage powered by 30 YF215 engines with reusable upper stages also being explored. Plans like these are a major reason the United States is increasingly concerned it could lose the strategic edge that has long supported modern military dominance. A new wide-reaching report is urging Congress to respond quickly as China accelerates its push to take the lead in space. In its 745-page annual report to Congress, scheduled for release on November 18th, the bipartisan U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission delivers an unfiltered assessment of Beijing's rapid rise as a global space power. Created by Congress in 2000, the Commission has spent decades tracking China's economic and military expansion. 
This year's assessment says China's space program has reached a new level in speed, scale, and ambition. U.S. military leaders have described China's growth in this domain as mind-boggling. Space Force General Chance Saltzman used that exact phrase during testimony to the Commission. He detailed how quickly China is constructing space-based systems designed to give Beijing an upper hand both during peacetime competition and in any future conflict. The report highlights his warning that China's rapidly expanding military space assets could threaten America's ability to rely on satellites for targeting, communications, and surveillance, especially across the Western Pacific, where U.S. forces depend heavily on resilient orbital networks. The Commission writes that China's accelerating space capabilities should concern every American. It stresses that U.S. society relies extensively on satellites for GPS, banking, meteorology, aviation, logistics, and even the functioning of the electrical grid, dependencies most people rarely think about. One of the report's key points is China's powerful advantage created by its fully integrated, dual-use space ecosystem. Commercial companies, state-owned enterprises, and the military operate as a tightly synchronized machine, allowing China's People's Liberation Army to rapidly transform commercial breakthroughs into military assets. This coordination is especially visible in China's counter-space technologies, systems built to disrupt, damage, or disable satellites. U.S. commanders warn these tools could be used to blind or confuse American forces at the outset of a crisis. The report notes that the United States avoided developing offensive space weapons for years to avoid accusations of militarizing space. But that restraint has faded as China openly treats space as an active warfighting domain. The Commission points to the U.S. Space Force's March 2025 warfighting framework, which elevates space superiority as a central objective for future military planning, covering both defensive and offensive operations needed to protect critical satellite infrastructure. China's progress is broad, fast, and strategically aligned. The report says Beijing has rapidly expanded its commercial launch capacity, begun deploying early elements of giant satellite mega constellations, and constructed a global network of ground stations, each designed for seamless military integration. China is also pouring resources into quantum communication satellites, reusable space planes, space-based computing and artificial intelligence, nuclear thermal propulsion for faster deep space travel, and even space-based solar power systems capable of beaming energy directly to Earth. According to the Commission, China has built this state-directed commercial space ecosystem in roughly a decade. Many of the companies appear private, but operate according to government priorities, giving China a fast-scaling industrial base that supports long-term strategic goals. The report calls this a formidable technological, economic, and geostrategic challenge to the United States. According to the Commission, China's ultimate objective is to shape international space rules, define global technical standards, and eventually surpass the United States as the world's leading space power. China is executing a full government-wide strategy to achieve this. Beijing views space as a critical warfighting domain and believes space superiority is essential to dominating information, something it sees as the foundation for controlling battlefields and gaining the upper hand in future conflicts. To pursue this vision, China is rapidly developing advanced capabilities across every sector of its space program, civil, military, and commercial. This includes major advances in launch vehicles, satellite infrastructure, and worldwide ground support stations. As a result, the strategic gap between the United States and China is narrowing faster than many expected. So where does this leave the world? Are we already in a conflict with China? Some experts argue yes, at least in terms of an ongoing shadow competition in space and cyberspace. That's why U.S. Space Force leaders openly discuss preparing for future confrontations in orbit. But any potential conflict may not resemble cinematic satellite dogfights. China's strategy may be far more subtle, eroding systems, seizing information advantages, and drawing other nations into its orbit by offering attractive, affordable, and widely adopted technologies. 
The question now is how the United States and its allies can counter the expanding appeal of China's space and technology ecosystem.